This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. In this video, we're going to combine some of the primitive objects that we've learned how to make in this chapter and see if we can't end up with a pencil that looks something like this. The project will give us a chance to incorporate both standard and extended primitives. We'll pick up a few new techniques as we get to throwing things together. And we'll be able to drive home the importance of choosing the correct viewport when making the objects that we create. Let's see what we could do. Now, when building a new object for a scene, one in this case will consist of several smaller objects that'll combine together to create the larger finished look. You always want to start by first asking yourself what particular object or particular part of that object you want to make first. I personally will choose either the largest object, which I can then use to size everything else up against, or I'll decide to make the most difficult shape right off the bat. Getting that properly shaped and scaled, then lining up everything else that I'm going to make in relation to that. In our example here, there's really nothing all that hard to make. So I'm going to start with the yellow wooden part of the pencil, getting that in the right shape and length. Now, before just slapping something on the screen, in order to eliminate the number of times I've got to go back and rotate what I make into position, I first want to think about what specific viewport I should be creating my object in. Being that the pencil will be laying flat on the ground, I can use either the front or left hand windows. I'm going to choose for this example the left hand view. I'm also going to want to make my object, which in this case is going to be a cylinder, directly in line with the crosshairs on my grid. In fact, all of the objects that I'm going to be making will be lined up with that middle of the grid intersection. That's just going to simply make it easier for me to keep things straight in line. Now, most pencils have a body that consists of six sides. So over in the right hand column, let's activate the cylinder command, then right away change the number of sides to six. I'll now head over to the left hand view, beginning to draw my object in the middle of that window. Now frankly, I'm not all that concerned with the overall length of my object. As long as I can get it on the screen, I can then go adjust it over in the Modify column. Once I've got my object positioned on the screen, I'll then activate my Perspective view, getting myself in a little bit better position to work further. Having the object positioned in the view the way it is, is just going to make that a little easier for me to see. OK, back on the right, I'll activate the Modify column. The length of my pencil will be controlled by the height. Let's go ahead and start to adjust that spinner. I'm simply going to take that value far enough out to give it the length that I'm looking for. Once I've done that, I'll activate a viewport, then center things up with the Control Shift Z keyboard combination. Let's now go back in the Modify column and give this object the name Wood. Once we've done that, we can go ahead and click away from the object on the screen, deselecting it. OK, the next thing we'll make is going to be the metal insert that's going to hold the wooden stick down to the eraser. That too is going to be a cylinder, but this one is going to have more size than the original one we made. Let's go back to the command panel, reactivating the cylinder command. Before making the next cylinder, let's change the wireframe color to green, and we'll increase the number of sides to 35. Now, the next object, this little metal insert that's going to connect the wood to the eraser, should line directly up in line with the wood stick itself. Let's say though that we didn't really think things through and we just decide to make the next cylinder in the top view. Do that and we'll see how things don't line up. Now when you pull away making the cylinder, take a look at the perspective view. See, thinking ahead and asking yourself what viewport should I be making things will definitely save you time in the long run. So let's cancel that out and make it instead at the center of the left hand window. The metal insert that we're making needs to be a little bit larger than the wood piece itself. So as you draw, make sure that that ring is just a little bit bigger around than the yellow one that's currently on the screen. Notice that by making it at the same grid intersection as we did the original stick, things are well lined up. When you're happy with the size of the ring, go ahead and let go, push away, and focus in on the other three views. When you have this piece the size it needs to be, go ahead and left click. Now check that out. Because of the way things are lined up, there's very little need at this point to make many adjustments. The only thing we really need to do is properly name the newly created object. Let's in the Modify column name it Metal Insert. Now if you do find things a little bit off size wise, you can always make those adjustments over in the Modify column. Let's now create the two rings that clamp down on the insert, keeping it locked onto both the wood stick and the eraser. That shape will be made with a torus. So I'll deselect my object in the view and then head back to the right hand column. 
Let's activate the Torus command and we'll change its wireframe color to let's say a bright blue. Now, back in our viewports, we'll make the first torus in the middle again of our left hand view. I'm going to first zoom back a ways by rolling my mouse so I have a little extra room around my objects. OK, we'll now click toward the middle, pushing toward the outside. The torus will most easily be made if you go to the outside of its size first, let go of the mouse, then pull back in. When you're happy with the size of your ring, go ahead and click one more time to complete the command. OK, let's go ahead and take our perspective view full screen, then we'll hit Z to center up on our ring. Why don't we also shade our edges by typing F4 so we can see our actual geometry. If you'd like to make your torus a little smoother going around, we'll go to the Modify column and we can adjust both the sides and the number of segments. Once you've got the right look, let's activate the Move command and we'll push it back a little farther onto the metal insert. Now when you grab the transformation gizmo, you're going to want to limit yourself to the X direction, that being the red stick. Once that's in position, let's now make a second copy by holding Shift down, grabbing the red stick again, and dragging a copy out to the side. When the Clone Options dialog opens up, we'll keep it set to Copy. As far as naming, we'll go to the right hand side and we'll call this Ring 1. We'll then select the other first torus we made, naming it Ring 2. Let's now click away to deselect. We'll go back to four views. And we'll hit again the Shift Control Z option to center things up. Next up, we'll make the pencil's eraser. Now, unlike both cylinders we previously created that had sharp edges on them, the eraser should have more of a rounded or curved edge. We can make that using a chamfer cylinder, which can be found under the extended primitives. Back in the command panel, we'll go under standard primitives and drop down to extended primitives. In the right hand column, second one down, we'll activate chamfer cylinder, then we'll change its wireframe color to purple. OK, now as far as where to make it, again we're going to focus in on the center of our left hand view. Let's activate the viewport, then put our mouse in the middle of the grid crosshairs. The eraser will be secured to the pencil by that green metal insert that we previously made. So as you draw out, you're going to want to make sure that the radius on your cylinder is just a little bit short of that green ring you see on the screen. When you're happy with that dimension, let go of your mouse, push away and focus your attention in the other windows. When you see the chamfer cylinder beginning to stick out the left hand side of the pencil, click again, then push away to control the beveled edge. Once that's in place, we can complete the command with one more left click. OK, let's go back to our perspective view full screen for a closer inspection. We'll again hit Z so we can center specifically on the eraser. As far as adjustments, we'll head to the Modify column and first add a few additional sides. Now once you've got that, to better smoothen that area out, we'll increase the number of fillet segments. OK, so far so good. Let's go ahead and click away to deselect. We'll take our viewport configuration back to four views. And we'll go ahead and center things up by again hitting the Control Z shortcut. One thing I forgot to do though was to actually name the eraser itself, so let's go ahead and reselect that real quick. We'll head to the Modify column and we'll put in the appropriate name. OK, last thing we're going to need here is going to be the lead at the other end of the pencil. That's going to be made out of a single cone. Now, it does look like two different objects, but it's actually just one with a two-tone paint job. A tan color for the wood and a black or dark gray color for the lead. We'll be looking into how to do all that in the chapter on materials. Let's now get ourselves back to the Create column. We'll click on the Cone command and we'll change the wireframe color to a bright red. Choosing the viewport we'll make our cone in, again we're going to be using the middle of our left hand view. Let's go ahead and draw that out. Now the cone, in other words the lead part of the pencil, is going to need to fit snugly inside the yellow geometry that we see on our original cylinder stick. So when you pull away, make sure that the original radius on that cone is going to fit nicely within that area. Once you've got that dimension, you'll let go of your mouse and then pull away. Now, personally, I'm running a little bit short of real estate as I'm using my mouse, so what I'm going to do is click again and then start to pull back. Now, I know it's going to be a little bit on the short side, but that's OK. It's an easy adjustment to make once I head over to the Modify column. Once I've got that last dimension on the cone set, I'll go ahead and click one last time. OK, for this adjustment, let's go ahead and take our front view full screen. I'm now going to activate the Move command and I'll slide my cone in the red direction over to the opposite end of the pencil. Once I've done that, I'm going to zoom in by rolling the wheel away from me. 
then panning the view to get in better position. Now, in the view, do you see the gap between the yellow stick and the cone? I'm going to have to remove that gap by pushing the cone a little farther to the left. Once I've got that butted up into position, I can then move to my Modify column for my final adjustments. Using the Height Spinner, I'll change the length as needed. Once I'm done with that, I'll rename the object LED. OK, let's return our perspective view full screen and we'll go in for a closer look. Hitting Z, then orbiting around, you'll notice the pencil LED is directly in line with the stick below it. Now, once we verify that, we'll click away to deselect and we'll center the entire pencil hitting Z. Let's also return real quick to four view so we can see the way things are lined out. I'll then center each viewport individually by typing Z in that view. Now, as we wrap things up, take a look at the 90 degree angles that we've created in the way that we've lined things up. By making each of our objects smack dab in the middle of our left hand view, we've got perfect alignment in all four windows. Why don't we reactivate the perspective view and give it a quick render for one final look. So there you go. Now what all did we learn here? First, when beginning to build, consider starting with the object that's either the largest or the most difficult to make. You can then create everything else that's needed in relation to that. Number two, before you begin making each object, think about what viewport it ought to be made in. That'll keep you from having to do a lot of needless rotating of your objects in order to line things up. And number three, use the grid lines on your screen to your advantage when you are lining things up. It'll just make life a whole lot easier. So practice up on your shapes and be sure to keep those workflow suggestions in mind as you're building. You do that and you're going to be well on your way to creating objects for your scenes that are both accurate and efficiently made. I'll go ahead and save this up as Pencil Completed if you'd like to look it over.